Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I'm back in the studio today. I have been working on my altered book journal uh, and I enjoyed making this cover so much that I decided I would go ahead and do a series um, completing the whole book. So if you're just joining me for the first time, welcome. I hope uh, that you like this video and if you do, give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so that you don't miss out on uh, any future videos. I will put a link to this entire playlist in down below in the description so that you can watch it from the beginning if you are just catching this episode for the first time. So uh, I ended up coming up with a theme after I started this uh, book. I, I didn't really have any idea what I was gonna do. I didn't know that it was gonna turn into a series. Um, someone had asked me to paint the cover and I did and I just liked it so I decided I'd go ahead and finish the whole book. So I ended up having put this little phrase on here that says, use your wings, and there was a bird. So I decided I was going to make this be a journal um, full of things with wings. And it's just kind of, you know, uh, gone on from there with some fun things that I hadn't tried before. So today's video is my fourth page that I'm working on. Uh, in the last two, I had ended up doing this whole mountain kind of scene because my pockets were angled pockets. So that was so much fun to do. I haven't finished decorating all my cards yet, um, but I have to have something to show for the final flip through. So I'm, I'm probably not gonna show that until the end, but it gave me the idea for the next page. So I've been finding my process um, tends to be, at least for this journal, uh, and, and kind of, I think in the last several that I've done, I start at the beginning. I know a lot of people kind of jump around and um, I've heard that that's a fun thing to do too. And I may do that in a future one as a challenge for myself, but I find myself just working beginning to end because then I have this sense of accomplishment. So the other thing I found myself doing is I want the whole book to be cohesive, even though it's things with wings, but all different things with wings. So I'm trying to also carry through either a color, a texture, a shape, a sparkle, something from one page to the next so that the whole book kind of uh, feels cohesive. So from here, um, I've used sparkle like I did in previous pages. It's much more earthy in colors, lots of browns, and then the turquoise and the copper accents. So I decided to carry through that through to the next page. And because it was Halloween when I started this, this page here, that kind of took me in a direction for two reasons. I live in the mountains and we have lots of things with wings in the mountains, but one thing that we have that not everyone has are bats. So they are migrating bats. They are here from about May through October. So they just left um, once the first freeze happens and that they're gone. Um, but they're really interesting and they're very helpful while they are here because they eat tons and tons of bugs. And we are on a creek, which means we could normally have lots of mosquitoes, but we don't have mosquitoes up here because the bats just take care of everything. So I wanted to do a bat page that wasn't necessarily Halloween, even though Halloween is kind of what gave me the idea. So the other thing that I got to use was if you watched the, the two videos where I did the mountains, I had this spiral that I wanted to use. Originally, I thought it might be butterflies and I ended up not using it. I'm gonna use it later with butterflies because I ended up having this be more, um, it doesn't have a lot of birds in it yet, but it has a couple of birds, an eagle and a, and another little mountain um, mountain bird there. So I decided I would do the bats on the next page and I could use my spiral because bats, if you've ever watched them, it's, it's crazy how they are, their behavior. They come out and they will just circle our house, just like a little tornado of bats. And you know, they're darting here and there. I have video of us in the summertime uh, when the sun is just going down over the mountains, we're right up against a mountain. So a lot of times uh, Lake Tahoe is up here, the sun will start setting and we're kind of in a dusk kind of area until the sun's actually gone. So it's just fun to sit outside and watch the bats just start coming out and 
flying overhead. It's just, it's just really interesting. So I decided my spiral was perfect for that. So I have done it here on my, on my little bat page. So I decided, um, I knew I wanted to do that. That was probably the first thing I made when I did this spread. So to do that, I'm just going to kind of go over that. I'm not going to make one right now, um, but I had, had made this one. So um, I did this one with music paper and uh, two pieces with cardstock in between just to give it a little more sturdiness because it's going to be used open and closed, you know, with a book. So for the... For this one, I wanted it a little bit smaller. Uh, when I did this, I had these slit pockets. Um, let me maybe take these out for a second here. So I had already folded my book page pockets. And so I knew I kind of had this mirror thing going on again. But I wasn't sure if I was going to leave make these pockets or leave them loose as kind of... Um, a book page that opens and then a fold out would fold out of that. I was toying with that idea because I really kind of liked the idea of being able to see my spiral flat and then open. I ended up not doing that, but it was really something I thought about for a bit. So having said that, I decided I wanted my uh, to use clock faces because bats, you know, coming out at night, they go, they sleep during the day and then they come out at night. So time is really an issue. Uh, I mean, literally it's not dark yet, but the sun, as soon as that sun, you can just watch it dip down the mountain and they come out. So I decided I wanted a light clock face on one side and a dark one on the other. This is not the one I used. I used a, a black one, more like, let's see, more like this, this one. And I will have, um, at some point, I haven't finished it yet, but I am working on it. Uh, I will have a kit, a digital kit that you can print out in my Etsy shop that will have the, uh, the painted papers that I did for my gel print that, I, that I'm using. I ended up with 60 papers. I don't know that I'm gonna list them all because they all might not make the cut. So that's why I'm waiting to the end too. And then also the embellishments. I don't know which ones I'll be able to share legally because they have to be my own. So. I'm kind of doing that as I go. So I will have a sheet of clock faces so that you'll be able to print them out and use them. I'm using them a lot in this book, um, but I use them all the time. So uh, I'll be I'll be sharing that. Um, so I've taken two of the two and a half inch clock faces, um, glued them together with some cardstock uh, in between, and then I also used my. Uh, transparent um, from Recollections. There's different brands, but this is clear ink and the clear transparent um, embossing powder just to kind of give them that extra little shine and a little extra um, to kind of make them feel a little plasticized. So I, I did that and then I just, you just cut a spiral. So this one was a three inch circle. You just start at the edge and however wide you want this to be, you just keep cutting around and around until you have your spiral. So that's what I did there. And then for the bats, um, I just went on my Cricut and I was fortunate enough to find a design that had different size bats. I thought I was going to have to go and get one bat pattern and then adjust the size to make different sizes for myself and copy and do all that. I was able to find one that already had this, this array of bats. So I just printed those out and that way I could use the larger ones at the larger end of the spiral um, going down to the smaller ones. So I love how that turned out. I think I even used a little bit of my, I don't know if you can see it, but it sparkles a little bit. I used some of my uh, sheer shimmer, which I'm running out of and need to order more. Uh, but I used some of that and I also used that on the bats. I tried to cut the bats out of um, glitter cardstock, but my glitter, my black glitter cardstock was only black and glitter on one side. So using black cardstock, uh, it, I was able to have it be black on both sides and then I just sprayed it with my sheer shimmer so that it would have a little sparkle too. So that was my focal point and I knew that before I even had picked out my papers. 
And even though I was starting this on Halloween, I didn't want it to be too in your face Halloween, but I did want to use the colors from the other page. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and do orange because I have a few papers printed in orange. And with my bats in my spiral, I knew I wanted to use one of my moon kind of looking papers. So for the center, my center pocket, this was one book page that I had done on the gel, pre gel plate. And I had done the first pull of just the rectangular um, plate that I was working with just to get a background. And then I had been using the three inch plate just to clean my brayer off. And so I would print those also. So this is the second print on top of the, the background print. And then the rest was just book page. And of course it was much lighter in color. So I've just used some walnut stain ink um, to ink up the edges darker and some uh, a vintage photo. I like to kind of blend them. And I always start out with a light, the lighter color because I don't know how dark I'm gonna to wanna to go. So I start out with vintage photo, which is lighter. And then if that's not dark enough, then just along the edge, I'll add the walnut stain ink. And then that still wasn't dark enough. So I added some black soot ink um, to the very edge just to make it stand out against the uh, folded book page. So the shiny coppery color here that you see, you can see it that up close that it's sparkly. That I was my po actual pocket. So I just again used my inks to darken it up a little bit. And then I used the Antique Bronze Distress Mica Spray, which I've been using a lot. It has that coppery color. So I sprayed all that, even though, you know, most of it got covered up, I just did the edge. And the other thing that I wanted to sparkle was my moon. So I, I have a three inch circle punch. So I just punched a hole in some cardstock so that I could uh, mask off the rest of my page and just have my three inch circle exposed from my moon. So once I had that masked, then I could spray my sheer shimmer spray just on the moon part and not have it be on the whole sky. So it gave that a little shine also. So that was my center page. And then I picked out two more um, of my papers that were oranges. Basically, whenever I do a spread, I kind of try to think of what my focal point's gonna be. And then I'll pull all the papers that possibly could go with that so that I will have kind of everything in a pile as I want to start, you know, making cards and things like that. So these are two more that I might end up using parts of. But this center one here and these two were only this size. I was using the plate that's, um, I think it's like seven by three or four, something like that. Um, inches. So I have lots of little painted pieces, but they're kind of skinny like this. The good thing is when you fold them in half, they were just about the size to be, you know, to cover the edge. I don't need to go all the way in. I just want to hide that edge. So both of those ended up being wide enough that I was able to, to just mirror the papers. So I've done that. I've, I've chose some colors that I liked. And again, they kind of blended into each other, really. So I, I wanted them to have a little bit of contrast because I was using orange and orange and, you know, brown. So for the second page, I actually ended up doing a lot more to that than I needed to because I ended up covering up most of it. But I used, um, for this one, I used some peacock feathers, um, distress oxide uh, around both my orange and my uh, book page. And then the antique um, or vintage photo, when you do that, it kind of turns it that kind of more green green turquoise color, which is kind of like how uh, the, the color in this paper. So it was just kind of me mixing and blending the inks on the edge just to get another color in there and some interest um, between my pockets. So after I've done that part, that's kind of just the base of my spread. And even though I started this book doing a lot of um, mixed media layering kind of things, I've been finding myself, at least with these two, taking them more literal. And so I haven't wanted to fussy them up too much with more stamping and stenciling and all that kind of stuff. So 
I've, I've been keeping it simpler. So the next step that I needed to do then is to figure out what papers I wanted to use for my cards in the pockets. Um, and then I also have, this is a pocket here too that I'm gonna have something for that. So I've, before I even started kind of thinking of each card and what it was going to say or have as a focal point, any of that, I wanted to kind of lay out my paper colors. So I had chosen this paper and decided I liked that there. It was similar to this one, just the colors were different, but same kind of dot thing. And then I didn't choose this until later on, so I'll kind of tell you as I go through my cards. And then I had picked out the corner of this one, which was this way, I guess. Just because I liked how the colors, you know, how how the part that was peeking through looked there. And then I chose um, this one, which kind of looked like a night sky. Very early on in my videos for this series, I mentioned that I might be using other papers besides just the, the pack that I, or the ones that I painted. And I had pulled out this Tim Holtz pack, which I will put a link down below for, for you. I love this one because it's lots of grungy backgrounds in lots of deep, moody color. And so I knew that this might have some things that would complement my painted papers and have some of those kind of um, colors that I, was, I knew I was gonna be working with in here that kind of went with my cover. So this is one of those, and I thought I really kind of liked how it's that night sky sunsetty kind of color, so I was gonna put that there. I had one here, cut here, and I think, I ended up doing something to it that I didn't like, so I'm gonna be cutting another one, but it was from uh, this page. So I'm gonna do kind of a, a thing there, I think. But I'll cover that uh, in a future video because I haven't done anything for these yet. So I'm gonna wait on, on these. So I'll set those aside and show you what I did here. And then I have a little demo also. So the first card I did was this one and like, you know, the Dragonfly page that I did, I like to go online and look for um, artwork, free artwork, copyright free artwork that I can use, or sayings, quotes, phrases, poems, anything like that. There's not a ton of stuff when it comes to bats, you know, so that was a challenge and it's taken me a while. But I, I got to thinking about all the different behaviors or things that bats do. One thing that they do is they eat tons of bugs. So I had this little card that was a Tim Holtz card similar to um, similar to something, this is a piece of paper, but it was just plain similar to something like this, one of his ephemera cards. So I just clipped the corners uh, with my corner punch and then distressed it. You can see that I've maybe put some of that sparkle in the background. You see I used some oxides and then splattered it with water so that it was kind of messier looking and then even some of the mica spray. And then I decided one thing I hadn't done yet in this journal was do any kind of window things. And I've done a demo for this long, long time ago. I will find that video and put a link to that below also. But I have a little tag punch that I punched out to make my window. This was before I had um, any kind of die cutting machine. So it was just a tag punch that I used and then some acetate behind. And then I've put uh, just some music sheet in, in the background. And I could have put, I thought about putting, you know, a picture of a bat. I just haven't found that many that, that felt right to me. So I decided, you know, bats eat lots of bugs. So I'll have that be my my little thing in there. But then I decided I wanted to do something with that tag. So I just went ahead and glued it onto my uh, my bug page. And then I did find this little um, saying, listen to them, the children of the night, what music they make. Um, because they do, they kind of have a little, they're just, they are, I thought children of the night, that was kind of a cute description because they're small, they fly around like they're playing, and um, so it is kind of like that. So anyway, that was the, the little saying, and then you can write on the back of that, and you can write on the back of that. So that was one of my cards uh, for here. 
And then this one uh, was that other little piece of paper. I've done a slot punch for the for the pull. I used um, tea bag, and I didn't do anything to this. This was the tea that you know it's a used tea bag, so it, it's tea stain. But I liked um, kind of it's kind of a metaphor in a way because the bat's wings you can see through them, you know, in the light. They're kind of transparent in a way, but they're very strong. So tea bag is like that, you know, it, it's, it's been wet and, you know, it's, it's pretty strong for being a little thin, not like tissue paper, you know? So that was, um, that part. And then again, just rounding the corners, uh, using a stamp for some lines on the back. And then again, the clock faces, this is where I did, uh, an experiment. So I, for one of the clock faces, I knew I wanted them to just be a little tuck to overlap each other. Um, there's a couple things that I like to do, hidden secrets in my journals. Um, if you have like a meaningful word or a meaningful number or something like that, I like to kind of make it be a part and not maybe something that anyone who doesn't know me doesn't wouldn't recognize. So I use 828 because it's a meaningful number to me. And so for this one, originally I was going to overlap them so that the eight was here and then it was kind of sitting on the 28, which I did, but then I decided I had these holes in the center of my uh, clock faces that I could use one of the brads and put it in backwards and the, the little parts that you splay could be my watch hands. So I've set this one to 828 also. This one, I did the correct uh, direction uh, just for, you know, a little dot there. But the other experiment thing that I did for this is I had never used glossy accents and I got to go to Hobby Lobby the other day. So I, I found that and I thought, oh, I'll try that. It works fine. Um, I don't know if you can see, I did this clock face with that and you can see the brush marks, which I'm not wild about. I didn't want to do too thick of a layer, not knowing how long it would take to dry and I'm too impatient. So I did two thin layers and it works fine. Um, I actually ended up, I think, going over this one uh, after I had them glued together. But on this one, I did my uh, embossing trick with the, just, you know, just the clear embossing just to give it that kind of shine. So in the end, I kind of like the embossing because it's faster and more even, but it's kind of use what you have, you know. Uh, the thing I like even more than both of these is to do my my resin because it's self-leveling and you don't have any kind of marks or anything, but that takes 24 hours to dry. And if you do more than one coat, it's even longer than that. So um, that's just, you know, three different ways to make things shiny and thicker and more durable. So I've made a little tuck. Like I said, you can write on the back. And then the other thing that I find myself doing as I'm doing a spread is, especially if I don't have a direction, my I don't feel that creative or I'm having a hard time or stuck or whatever, I go through my little, um, I go through these little things. And I have a few of them. And I didn't use anything from this one for this one. I have this one that's snarky, um, small talk. And then this little chit chat words one. And then this one I really like too, because it's just um, different sayings, you know, like they were like clipped out of books. So it, they're very random. So I find that when I'm stuck, I'll go through and just read all of these little things like into the near darkness, that would have been one that I could have used for this. So I have a little spot here on the side that you can't see where I've stuck little little quotes and little things that might work for the spread. So like I have this one full of superstitions that I haven't used yet. And I have this one curious looking that I haven't used yet. And this, I don't know, this may end up in there too. I admit that my weirdness is above the natu national average, but I'm comfortable with that. So, you know, because bats are kind of weird. So, and as I've been doing this, I keep thinking, oh, people are going to think I'm really weird to be doing this spread about bats. But 
Um, anyway, it kind of just takes on a life of its own when you start reading these little quotes. And then they kind of help you with what you want to put on your cards. So this one, um, I took two out of the snarky one, which I don't normally use that one. I, I have done a whole journal where I used them for a specific person that I knew could handle it. But there are some funny things in there. Not for everybody, but um, this one I liked. It said, your crazy is showing. You might want to tuck that back in. So I loved that because the whole way bats tuck in their, you know, their wings they tuck. But then also you've heard the term, you know, bat crazy kind of thing. So um, going batty, that kind of thing. So that's where that I thought fit into this spread. So I just took that little quote. I have some tea bag behind there. I put some thread, some of the same orange uh, rust thread that I had used over here in there um, because it's kind of coming unraveled. You would have some unraveling thread. Um, anyway, and then just another little clock face here. And this is just was a scrap um, from uh, some of the papers that I was using. So I just took a little scrap that you can write on. So it's just like a little kind of a little card. Um, that fits right there in that little tuck. So that was another card. And you can see why this takes me days and days and days to um, get anything done here. But this one I decided, the other thing about bats is we have um, bat houses um, that we put on the trees or on your house. Or in our case, we also have shingle siding that they like. And so they will go into those little nook and crannies during the day, but then they come out at night. So there was one of the little um, phrases in this book was um, from sunrise till the shadows grew. And so that's where they live, but, you know, during the day. So I thought that was just a fun little um, phrase to put here. And then again, I just use some of the little scraps. I keep a little box. Um, and any tiny little piece uh, uh, that comes off of whatever I'm making, I put in that box and then I can use them for uh, just to kind of enhance little the little phrases. And then just some strings, some little um, eyelets there to hold, to bind it in. And then this was just some lined paper from a notepad I'm recycling. And I decided for this one, I would make it perforated. So... I've shown this before, but to do um, a perforated notepad so that you can just tear them off, I just take the sewing machine thread out of my machine and then just sew with no thread, and it gives you nice, even, close together little perforated um, dots. Um, and it's fast. So I've just made a little notepad. The wood for this, I didn't mention, is um, from Tim Holtz, the 3D Fades uh, wood grain one. I've shown that before, and I'll put a link um, down below for that one. And if you haven't used that one and you end up getting it to, to do your wood grain, um, I will mention that when you do that, you only use um, the main deck, and then instead of the two, the top and bottom of your folder that you put in, you just use the top. Um, because the 3D fades are much thicker. So it's just your duck, the 3D fades, and then that top plate that you run through. The other thing you need to do for this one is spritz it with um, water. I did this one on brown cardstock, craft cardstock. So I spritz both sides with water. Otherwise, where these little grooves are, it will actually crack your paper. So spritz it with water, run it through three times, and then you'll have your wood grain. And then to get the color, I used um, just a variety of distress oxides and sprays, whatever you have handy that's brown, um, and you can get different effects with that. So I think I used walnut stain and vintage photo on this just to kind of have it not be one flat color. So that's my little notepad there. And then for this pocket, this is the one I want to show you a little demo. Um, and I've made all the parts and pieces, but I want to put them together on camera in case you want to try to make this. And I got this idea from uh, Bohemian Crafting, and I showed how I did it in this one. It's just a little mechanical pocket, only I'm trying to find ways to vary it up to kind of make it my own and make them all a little bit different. 
Um, this one ended up having another pocket on the side, but it's it's installed in my book. So for this one, I decided I wanted to make it a completely separate little uh, pocket that just like any other card that's a pocket. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so I have lots of little parts and pieces here. Um, and I'll try to kind of go through these without making it too complicated. So uh, the pocket in the previous ones that I have done, um, this one had the mechanical part. So you basically have a card, um, the holder, a little piece that covers the bottom. And in this case, I did a side pocket to the side. So this one I'm going to be doing is a complete separate. It's not going to be attached to the book. It's going to completely pull out, but have a couple of pockets in it. So this is going to, we'll call this my base. This is going to be kind of the center of my sandwich. And then I have the front mechanical part. This is where I made the mistake. Normally you're going to have the base a pull-out card that's the same width as the base, and then your front mechanical part is gonna actually wrap around and flaps the glue to the back, and then that goes in my previous ones, that went into my book. So for this one, I'm adding a piece that's gonna be another pocket on the back. So to remedy the fact that I cut this the same width instead of an inch wider, I have made some gussets. Two things that you can do. If you wanted to still go ahead and keep your card, this card, the same width, um, then you need the gussets if you do it like this. But if you could also make it narrower like I did. My original thought was I'll make this pull-out part narrower because it really only needs to um, attach to this on the bottom then I could put just a really skinny bead of glue or sew it with my sewing machine as long as this still fit in. I just was afraid this was going to be too tight going in and out, even though I had made it narrower. So I'm going to go ahead and do the gusset idea. So my thought process for the whole design of this, um, as far as the aesthetic part of it, was I had pulled out of that little quote book thing, um, this one that said the evening sun descending. And I had already picked out this piece of paper that was one of my hand painted papers. And I was originally gonna put it this way. And then I had this little saying that was gonna go in the middle because it looked like a sun sunset to me. And you know, when the sun sets, there's like the sky is darker above um, as the way the light is, I guess. So that's kind of why I was going to do it that direction. But then I had the idea of making it this mechanical pocket. So if I make it a mechanical pocket, um, the other, a couple of other quotes that I had pulled out of the same little book, I decided they all kind of went together. And so one of them was here and said, over the mountains. So the evening sun descending over the mountains. And then the other one was beyond the purple skies. So I thought I can incorporate all of these into this little mechanical pocket thing. So I flipped this over because I thought, okay, I can have the sun where I live, it sets over the mountain. So this is my mountain. The sun's going down behind him. This would be the west. This would be the east. And that's kind of how it would operate. So that got me thinking I need something for under here that's going to be revealed. So I thought that purple, beyond the purple skies, I found this piece of uh, paper in the same Tim Holtz book, um, paper pack. So I thought that could be my base. And then I needed something for um, my, my mechanical part of my card. And so, and I also needed a piece for below. So I actually first picked out this piece below um, from, it's from the same uh, piece of paper, but I, I liked the colors of this um, because of all the blues and the valley where I live, the valley's on this side. So there's lots of um, 
it's very marshy and they grow like alfalfa and hay. There's cattle down there, that kind of thing. So I thought that kind of reminded me of that in a way. So, and it was colors that would kind of complement what I already had on the bottom there. So I decided that would be my bottom piece. And then I needed my pullout card, which if I played this right, uh, when you pull it out, you're gonna re you're gonna see this, but then you can also write on the back. So as this pulls up, and this is its own loose card, you can write on the back of this. So I took my little card, and this happened to be musical too, which I've been using in this book, so that translates also. And then I showed this in a previous video. Um, how I made these uh, tabs to look like rusted metal, old metal. So I used one of those again for my the pull part. And then again, that same notepad I had used in um, the other little notepad thing. I just glued a piece of that because this was double-sided, um, this paper. So it wasn't really writable on this side. So I, I, I covered it with a little piece of paper so you could write on it. So that's gonna operate that way. And then I have my gussets. So I had figured out those parts and then I needed my mount my mountains too. So I love how this turned out. So I took a scrap of cardstock and then I went through my little box of scraps here and I pulled out some of my painted pieces that I had used on the mountains from the previous page. And wherever I had, this was actually the corner of a page. And I don't know if you could see that, but we have just a little bit of snow right now because we've already had some snow. So this is actually what it looks like. We still have green, but we still have um, a little bit of snow on the mountains. And so I just took those little scraps that I had, little teeny ones, and just um, glued them onto a piece of cardstock, kind of in this general shape. And then I layered, you know, some other ones on top. And I layered some uh, of the p uh, painted deli paper that I had painted on. And then the only thing I'm not wild about, but it's okay, is you see a line across here. It's because this little piece of mountains was a scrap that was like double layers of cardstock. And it was that piece that I'd shown before, I don't know if I have a scrap of it left, um, that I had hand uh, just sprayed and spritzed all different sprays on a piece of cardstock. And so that's how I had made that. So it, it was a little thicker. Um, to fix that, I should have maybe uh, glued another layer down um, just to kind of have both of those be forward, but it is what it is. It's fine. Um, and then I actually had a little scrap also of um, tissue paper where I had stamped the trees. So this was actually just another scrap. And so I just did just the tops of the trees because as this moves, it's going to tuck, tuck in into there kind of. So this is going to be my focal point that's going to move and then you see the sunsets going down behind the mountains. I just love how that turned out. So I'm going to kind of put this together now here. Um, so the first thing I think I want to put, I've prepared all of my pieces, um, but I want to put my little phrasing, what's going to go on this background, because it has to fit within this spot. You're not going to, even when this is pulled up, you're not going to be able to see everything. So I want to clip this together just so I can see where I can put another little surprise on the inside. So I need this piece too, because this is easier to do, I think, before I start gluing it all together, maybe. So that's gonna go there. And then I can kind of see, you know, if this is pulled up, I really only have kind of like this much room. So I think I'm gonna clip that too. That way I get my, my little surprise in just the right spot. So the first part of my little surprise 
are is the words and I've just put beyond the purple skies um, I just use a little uh, vintage photo to kind of distress the paper and then the purple is a piece of deli paper scrap that I had that I had painted and I just tore off the little purple part so I'm just gonna glue this down Okay, and then the other little thing, and it's really tiny and fragile, um, I cut out a little thing, again with my Cricut. I'll lay it on here so you can see it. I, I shrunk it down really small. The, the design was actually much bigger and had some other stuff that I didn't want on it. Um, but this was the part I wanted anyway. It's like the little bats flying through the night sky. So I'm going to glue that just onto... I just did it on black cardstock. So I'm just going to kind of try to fit this. See how that might fit in that little surprise spot there. Okay, so I have my little saying and my little bats where I need them to be. And then I also need to get um, this attached first too. So I only want to glue down, just so you see again, this is half an inch and there's a fold there. So you would score in between your two cuts, fold that back. I'm gonna fold a half an inch here also. And then I just kind of take that and fold it in half um, for my other little fold. Okay, so this is the part that's going to operate. You can decorate this up more. In fact, maybe I'll add this little phrase is what I want to put. And I think I want to put it about here. And then I also tore some more deli paper that was kind of these sun, sunny colors. So maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and stick some of these on here somehow. Let's do this one first, I think. Okay, I will get my art, uh, my matte medium out because I want that to be more translucent, I think. So I like to use this for, it's just liquid tax matte medium for um, tissue paper, that kind of thing. You could use Mod Podge too, whatever. But I don't want this to stand out that much. The other thing um, I've learned as I'm going here is anything that you're gonna do to something that involves wet things, I like to do those all before I start putting things together because if I need something to dry and iron it again flat, you know, and that I think I need the art glitter glue, then I want to um, be able to do that to have it be dry, or if something got messed up, maybe I, I got a little more, a little carried away or something, and I, I don't want um, splatters in certain places or that kind of thing, or I need to redo something. So I like to do all the wet stuff first. But this isn't too awfully bad, I think, so. Okay, so this is gonna get attached. Just this part here, I'm gonna glue to the bottom of this one, and I want it centered. So I'm just gonna put glue here, just like that. So when you make your card, the card that's gonna go in there, when I cut that, I paid attention to how far down it was gonna fit into my pocket. so that I could have this tab hit where I want and not have it be too tall, like that. Okay, now I need to attach this to this first, I think. So I've made these little gussets. These had to be pretty skinny um, because they need to fit within this half inch. So it's just a piece of cardstock folded in half and then I cut it 
because I had rounded these corners, I don't want it to go into the rounded part. So I cut it so that it's, it's before it starts to round. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue one on each side of this. And then I'm gonna put just glue here and glue it to my back, my back, making sure I don't get any glue on, on this part. So you wanna use your rounded corners to help you get that lined up. Make sure the card is on, out of the way. And then if you want, you can, you know, use little clamps to get that edge till it's nice and dry. I'll do this real quick and then I'll show you my other little part I've added while this sets up for a second here. So I decided on this one that I also wanted to have another pocket that you can write on, on the back. Because normally this whole thing then would be glued into my book after I put this on. This, I still need to add this. But then that would all be glued in. But for this one, I decided I wanted a writable card. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put this bottom piece on first, and then I will add uh, my back pocket. Okay, now I could have left it just this and just, you know, put a, a piece of paper or something glued on here so that you could just write on this and it's just one pocket. And you could always add, you know, maybe another card in, he in here because, you know, you've kind of made this a pocket too. So, you know, there's just different options. And like I said, I didn't come up with this original idea. So I'm trying to do different variations on what I saw um, from Bohemian Crafting, just to kind of make it, you know, feel like I'm not just copying everything she does. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Now, uh, when you put this on, you have to make sure that your pocket will still function. So you're not gluing the center. You're only gluing um, these two edges to this, and then you can glue it along the whole back. Okay, so I'm going to put, um, I think to start, maybe I'll do the back first. Which way is it going to go? This way. So I'll put glue on the entire back half. And again, I'm just going to use those rounded corners I made to line that up. And you don't have to round your corners if you don't want to. I did um, just because I, I like how that looks. It goes, it, it allows your, your pockets and things to go into whatever other pocket a little smoother because of the corners rounded. They don't get hung up. So I've done that. And then I'm going to just put glue I can see where my score line is here. So I know that this really only goes a little above that. So I can just, or I can go here. I just wanna make sure I don't get any glue here. So just those ends. And then just for good measure, move that out of your way. Now see how mine wobbles a little bit? It's because it's not exactly the same size. If I had gone ahead and made that width, but I had already made this card, I didn't, I didn't want to redo it. But then it wouldn't wobble like that. But I'm okay with that. Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to add here 
is I want to add my over the mountains. And this one I did um, on a piece of that uh, cardstock that I made look like metal, if you could see that. That was in a previous video, so I, I'll try to remember which one and make a note of it in the description, but it's in this series, so it'll be easy to find. It would be in the Dragonfly one. I think that's where I used it. So I'm just going to pop that right there in the center. And then my mountains. So my mountains, I kept, I made them the width of the whole card, um, but I wasn't sure if I only wanted them the width of that little narrow part, partly because I really love that turquoise color and I kind of wasn't sure if I wanted to see, see it there. But I decided, you know, I thought I, I can glue it on and then if I wanted to trim those off, then I could. But I'm thinking I like it the whole width anyway, just because it would look kind of weird like that, I think, to see that blue on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it the whole width. And I just need to kind of see where that fold is. So when you do this, you don't want any any of your, uh, whatever embellishment, like say this was a butterfly, I would just be gluing it within this square. I don't want any on this folded part because it will, uh, it wants to go down in there, it will not work. And I don't want it to go over this folded part because it needs to fold. So you have to keep your decorative element um, glued only within this little area. So that kind of dictates this edge I can do where that score line is. And then if I look this side, I can see where my, oops, I can see where my glue needs to be. So I can actually make some little marks, I think might be the smart thing to do, is I can actually do this. Then I can see where I need to put my glue on my mountains. So I'm gonna do that. I need to move it up. I think what I'll do is put glue on this side. Yeah, it had to go a little bit higher than I thought, I think, to function the way I want. So let's see. Okay, and then my... my other pocket. So I decided for this pocket, I'm just gonna leave it plain because I want to be able to write on the back of it. I decided to notch this out. I think, ironically, that looks like a little wing. So I just need to glue that around. I could decorate it up more, but I, th I, want, it, I want as much writing space, you know, in this decorated journal as I can. And then I just made a plain card again with um, just the clock faces to do the pull. So, it'll be a side. I didn't want another top one because I didn't want to get it confused with what was going on here. So it's kind of hidden, but when you flip it over, you'll see that there's another. And you could do this with gussets or not, you know, it depends on how much you want to fit into your pocket, I guess. So I'm trying to control myself because you see how thick my book is getting. So I'm just gonna do that like that. And it's really for the sake of being able to add another pocket. Okay, there's that. And then another little card.
which maybe I want to make a little smaller. Depends on if you want to see those numbers or not. So I may trim a little bit off just so it'll tuck in there a little further. But that's my, my little share for today. There you go. I just love how that turned out. Um, I also should mention, I uh, on this piece that's my mechanical piece, you can see that little sparkle on the top. I covered the bottom half of the turquoise part and I sprayed this with the uh, mica spray, the antique bronze. And then I sprayed just the bottom half, which now is mostly covered. Um, but here you can see a little sparkle. I, I used the uh, sheer shimmer for that. Now I should do a little squirt of sheer shimmer right there. And I might still do that because that would really be pretty um, in here. So I could do that. Anyway, I just love how that turned out. It's its own little separate card pocket thingy. And it's gonna be right at home here in my journal, right here. And you see, I just like how you can see the, um, the mountain kind of peeking out and the little tree peeking out. I just love that. My book is never going to ever close. I'm to the heart, you know. Once I once I finish these uh, cards, I have three, at least three things I need to do here. And then um, it's time to do my heart, which I won't fold yet, but I do need to go and um, if I want this to be writable, I need to go and gesso these pages. And then I just have the back part to do. So I hope you enjoyed my little batty crazy spread and um, I'm looking forward to finishing it up so I hope you have a great rest of your day now go make something bye